the human's combat armor and plasma rifle made the fragile Illyrian diplomat cringe in instinctive terror upon glimpsing Earth's deadliest apex predator disembarking from the sleek silver spacecraft. Mark Allen strode confidently onto the landing pad, armored boots crunching on strange bioluminescent plants. The quaking Illyrian diplomat extended a trembling tentacle in greeting. Welcome to Illyria, I am Orion. Mark gripped the squishy appendage firmly, his suit's exoskeleton whirring. The alien gasped at the human's raw strength and yanked back his tentacle. Mark noticed many Illyrian civilians peering from windows, frozen in abject horror at humanity's arrival. Soldiers with plasma cannons had the human surrounded, ready to vaporize him at the slightest wrong move. While following Orion into the Illyrian capital, entire crowded streets parted with panicked yells before the human. Monster, hissed Illyrians, backpedaling from the bipedal horror, fainting. Illyrian propaganda posters depicted savage humans butchering hapless aliens. In his bedroom, blast-proof metal shields slammed over the windows as Mark entered. Illyrian servants fled screaming as he approached. Mark's bioscanners detected poison in his dinner. His armor's audio enhancement caught snippets from outside. Deploy bioweapons immediately. Purge the human before it massacres us all. Mark sighed heavily knowing the Illyrians would likely attack preemptively out of sheer terror. He had twenty-four hours to convince these sniveling cowards humans weren't a threat, or the mighty Illyrian battle fleet would exterminate mankind. Failure was not an option. The fate of Earth depended on Mark not fucking this up. The next morning Mark found himself at an ornate reception hall in the Illyrian capital. The event, hosted by the Illyrian High Council, was meant to officially welcome him as Earth's representative. Hundreds of Illyrian dignitaries milled about, sipping glowing beverages from crystal flutes. As Mark worked the room, nodding politely and shaking tentacles, he couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, studied. The Illyrian's body language was stiff, guarded. They kept a wary distance, observing his every move like he was a volatile experiment that could go off at any moment. Even Orion, who had been assigned as Mark's guide and liaison, seemed on edge. While his demeanor remained carefully neutral, Mark caught him sharing furtive, concerned glances with other Illyrians when he thought the human wasn't looking. As the reception began winding down, a spindly Illyrian in a lab coat approached Mark. Pardon me, the alien said, his voice quavering slightly. I am Zephyr, lead xenobiologist for the High Council. Forgive my forwardness, but I must know... Is it true your species evolved on a world with gravity twice as strong as Illyria's? Mark nodded. That's right, it's why we developed denser muscles and bones than most species. Zephyr's eyes widened, a mix of fascination and primal fear. And is it also true, he pressed on, that your planet has predators much larger than humans? Beasts with fangs as long as my arm that can disembowel prey in one swipe? Yes, Mark confirmed. Humans only survived by using tools and wits to outsmart stronger creatures. With that, the scientist turned and hurried off, leaving Mark alone in the emptying hall. An uneasy knot twisted in his stomach. In the days that followed, Mark immersed himself in his mission, driven to absorb every scrap of knowledge he could about the Illyrians. He spent countless hours hunched over consoles in their research labs, his eyes scanning rapidly through dense scientific archives. He shadowed Illyrian scientists as they conducted experiments, observing their methods with a keen, analytical gaze. Yet even as he worked, Mark couldn't shake the constant prickling sensation of being watched. It wasn't just the scientists, with their wary sidelong glances and nervous twitches whenever he drew near. No, this felt different, more intense. Everywhere he went, he could feel the weight of unseen stares boring into him, a potent mix of dread, disgust, and perverse fascination. One night, as Mark made his way back to his quarters, a hooded figure emerged from the shadows. It beckoned to him, urging him to follow into a narrow, dimly lit alleyway. Mark hesitated, instincts screaming at him to keep walking, but something compelled him forward. Against his better judgment, he stepped into the alley. There in the gloom he found himself surrounded by a group of Illyrians. They had the look of radicals, 
their eyes burning with zealous hatred. You don't belong here, human, one of them spat, leveling a strange glowing weapon at Mark's chest. Your kind are an abomination, a blight upon the galaxy. We will not allow you to corrupt our people with your savage ways. Mark raised his hand slowly, keeping his voice calm and even. I come in peace, he said, meeting the Illyrian's gaze steadily. I'm not here to harm or corrupt anyone. I only want to learn, to understand. But his words fell on deaf ears. The radicals advanced, weapons humming with deadly intent. In that moment Mark knew with cold certainty that they would not be swayed by reason. They saw him as a threat to their very way of life, and they would not rest until that threat was eliminated. As they closed in, time seemed to slow. Mark felt a strange calm settle over him, his senses sharpening to crystal clarity. He saw the nearest attacker's muscles tense, saw the minute shift in balance that telegraphed his intentions. In a blur of motion, Mark lunged, seizing the Illyrian's weapon arm and twisting savagely. The alien let out a shriek of pain as the weapon clattered to the ground. Mark pivoted, using the Illyrian's own momentum to send him flying into the wall with a sickening crunch. The others swarmed him then, but Mark's years of training took over. He moved with fluid grace, dodging blows and striking with devastating precision. Bones crunched and tentacles snapped as he laid into his attackers with brutal efficiency. It was over in minutes. The Illyrians lay groaning and twitching on the ground, their weapons scattered uselessly at Mark's feet. He stood over them, chest heaving, adrenaline surging through his veins in a dizzying rush. But beneath the rush... A cold knot of dread formed in his gut. He had no choice, he told himself. He had to defend himself. But he knew how this would look to the Illyrians. He could already picture the headlines, the breathless news reports painting him as the very monster they all feared. This incident would only reinforce their terror of his species, undoing any fragile progress he might have made. Mark turned to leave, his mind racing with the implications of what had just happened, and there, standing at the mouth of the alley, was Orion. The Illyrian liaison's face was an inscrutable mask in the dim light, his eyes glittering with some unreadable emotion. Mark stood before the Illyrian High Council, their piercing stares burdened with suspicion and dread. The chamber crackled with tension, the alien dignitaries shifting uneasily as if expecting the human to erupt in violence at any moment. Orion lingered to the side, his face an unreadable mask. Counselors, I acted only to defend myself, Mark began, his voice steady. These radicals attacked me without provocation. He activated his personal communication device, projecting a holographic recording of the incident. The council watched in stunned silence as the footage played out, the hooded Illyrians brandishing glowing weapons, their hateful words echoing in the chamber. Then came the blurred frenzy of combat, Mark's lightning-fast strikes dispatching his attackers with brutal efficiency. As the recording faded, a suffocating hush fell over the room. The head counselor's voice quavered as she finally spoke. "'It seems we have greatly underestimated the capabilities of your species, Mr. Allen,' she said, her gaze drilling into him. "'We knew that humans were physically imposing, but we had no idea you were capable of such... savagery.' The word stung, but Mark bit back his retort. The counsellor continued, each word heavy with foreboding. In light of this incident, we have no choice but to re-evaluate the terms of our diplomatic agreement. We cannot risk exposing our people to such potential violence. Mark opened his mouth to protest, but the counsellor silenced him with an upraised tentacle. You will be confined to your quarters until further notice, she declared her tone brooking no argument. We will provide you with all necessary amenities, but you are not to leave under any circumstances. Is that understood? Mark nodded woodenly, a leaden weight settling in his chest as he grasped the gravity of his predicament. Flanked by a trio of heavily armed Illyrian guards, he was marched back to his quarters, their weapons trained on him with unwavering intensity. As the door hissed shut behind him, the finality of the sound echoed in Mark's ears. He surveyed his lavish prison, the plush furnishings, the well-stocked pantry, 
the entertainment console blinking with a myriad of alien diversions, all of it cold comfort in the face of the chilling realization that he was now a captive on an alien world. He sank onto the edge of the bed, his head cradled in his hands. The weight of his mission, the hopes of all humanity, pressed down on him like a physical force. But beneath that weight, a spark of defiance kindled. He would not let this setback define him. He would find a way to earn the Illyrians' trust, to prove that humans were more than the monsters they feared. No matter how long it took, no matter what obstacles he faced, he would not rest until he had forged a path to peace between their species. But as Mark lifted his gaze to the window, taking in the alien cityscape stretching out before him, a flicker of movement caught his eye. There, perched on a distant rooftop, was a figure draped in a familiar hooded cloak. Though he was too far away to make out any features, Mark could feel the intensity of the figure's stare, could sense the hatred radiating from them like a palpable force. A chill skittered down Mark's spine as he watched the figure melt back into the shadows, vanishing as suddenly as they had appeared. In that moment, he knew with cold certainty that his troubles were far from over. The attack in the alley had been just the beginning, a lone spark in a powder keg of fear and prejudice that threatened to consume both their worlds. He tore his gaze away from the window, his jaw set with grim resolve as he began to pace the length of his quarters. His mind raced, running through scenarios and strategies, searching for any crack in the impenetrable wall of Illyrian distrust. A sharp knock at the door jolted him from his thoughts. Mark froze, every muscle tensing as his hand instinctively darted to the empty holster at his side. The knock came again, more insistent this time, and Mark forced himself to relax, drawing a steadying breath as he crossed to the door. He thumbed the release, the door sliding open to reveal... As the days crawled by, the walls of Mark's lavish quarters began to feel more and more like a prison. He paced the room like a caged beast, his mind churning with unanswered questions and growing frustration. The only breaks in the monotony were the brief, tense encounters with his Illyrian guards, who regarded him with a mixture of fear and disgust. To keep himself from going stir-crazy, Mark threw himself into his research poring over the Illyrian scientific archives he had been granted access to. He also spent hours honing his martial arts skills, his body moving through the familiar forms with a fluid grace that belied his growing inner turmoil. One night, as Mark lay in bed staring at the ceiling, his thoughts spiralling in an endless loop, a soft knock at the door jolted him from his reverie. He sat up, instantly alert, his heart pounding in his chest, who could be visiting him at this hour? Cautiously he approached the door and opened it, revealing Orion standing in the hallway. The Illyrian liaison's face was etched with a grim determination that sent a chill down Mark's spine. Come with me, Orion whispered urgently, his eyes darting up and down the corridor. I don't have much time. Mark hesitated, his mind racing with possibilities. What could Orion want with him? Was this some kind of trap? But the prospect of finally getting some answers was too tempting to resist. With a curt nod, Mark stepped out into the hallway, falling into step beside Orion as they hurried through the winding corridors of the Illyrian capital. Their footsteps echoed in the eerie stillness, the only sound in the deserted halls. After what felt like an eternity, they arrived at a small dimly lit room. As Mark's eyes adjusted to the gloom, he saw a group of Illyrian scientists gathered around a large, glowing screen. They turned to regard him with a mixture of apprehension and fascination, their eyes glittering in the screen's ethereal light. Mark's gaze was drawn to the images and videos playing out on the screen. He saw humans engaged in various forms of combat and physical exertion, from ancient warriors locked in brutal battles to modern soldiers and athletes pushing their bodies to the limit. Some of the footage was grainy and faded, clearly from Earth's distant past, while other clips were sharper, more recent. With a jolt, Mark realized that the Illyrians had been studying his species, gathering intelligence on their physical capabilities and martial prowess. A cold knot of dread formed in his stomach as he turned to face Orion. "'What is this?' he demanded, his voice low and dangerous. "'Why have you brought me here?' 
Orion gestured to the screen, his expression somber. This is what my people see when they look at you, he said softly. A species forged in the crucible of constant danger, honed by millennia of fighting for survival against impossible odds. A species that thrives on conflict and conquest, that knows no fear in the face of death. Mark stared at the screen, his mind reeling with the implications of Orion's words. He had always known that humans were viewed as a threat by many in the galaxy, but to see the evidence laid out before him like this was chilling. So what now, he asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Are they going to keep me locked up forever or worse? Orion shook his head, his expression unreadable. I don't know, he admitted, but I do know that there are those among my people who will stop at nothing to ensure that humanity never gains a foothold in Illyrian space. And I fear that your presence here may have just given them the perfect excuse to act. He glanced at the scientists who were murmuring among themselves, their eyes fixed on the screen. We must be careful, Mark. One wrong move could spell disaster for both our species. Mark nodded, his jaw tight with resolve. He knew that the stakes had just been raised, that every action he took from here on out could have profound consequences for the future of human Illyrian relations. As he stared at the images of his fellow humans, their faces etched with the same grim determination he now felt, he knew that he would have to be smarter, stronger, and more cunning than ever before if he hoped to navigate the treacherous waters ahead. The door to the room burst open, startling the gathered Illyrians. A group of armed guards stormed in, their weapons trained on Mark and Orion. "'Step away from the human!' one of them barked, his voice sharp with fear and anger. "'You are all under arrest for conspiring with the enemy.' Mark tensed, his mind racing as he calculated his odds of fighting his way out of this situation. But before he could act, Orion stepped forward, his hands raised in a placating gesture. The guard sneered, his grip tightening on his weapon. Peaceful coexistence with a species like theirs is impossible, he spat. They are a plague upon the galaxy, a threat to everything we hold dear. He turned to his men, his voice ringing with authority. Take them into custody. The High Council will decide their fate. As the guards closed in, Mark braced himself for a fight. His muscles coiled with tension. But Orion caught his eye, shaking his head almost imperceptibly. Mark hesitated, every instinct screaming at him to resist, to fight back against this injustice. But he knew that Orion was right. Any show of aggression on his part would only reinforce the Illyrians' worst fears about his species— with a heavy heart, he allowed himself to be led away. The guards' weapons pressed against his back as they marched him through the halls of the Illyrian capital. He could feel the weight of their fear and hatred bearing down on him, a palpable force that threatened to crush him under its weight. As they emerged into the open air, Mark blinked against the sudden brightness, his eyes watering in the harsh light of the alien sun. He saw a crowd of Illyrians gathered in the square, their faces twisted with anger and revulsion as they caught sight of him. Monster! they shouted, their voices rising in a cacophony of hatred. Abomination murderer! Mark flinched at the words, each one a dagger to his heart. He had come to this world in the spirit of peace and cooperation, hoping to forge a bond between their species. But now, as he looked out at the sea of hostile faces, he realized the true depths of the Illyrian's fear and prejudice. As the guards led him towards a waiting transport, Mark caught a glimpse of a familiar figure in the crowd. It was the hooded radical from the alleyway, his eyes burning with a fanatical hatred as he stared at Mark. For a moment, their gazes locked, and Mark felt a chill run down his spine. He knew with a sudden terrifying certainty that this was far from over. The Radical and his ilk would not rest until they had purged the galaxy of the human threat, no matter the cost. As the transport doors slid shut, cutting off the jeers and taunts of the crowd, Mark slumped against the wall, his head spinning with the weight of his failure. He had come so close to building a bridge between their species, only to watch it crumble beneath the weight of fear and ignorance. But even as despair threatened to overwhelm him, Mark felt a flicker of determination kindling in his heart. He would not give up, not now, not ever. 
he would find a way to prove to the Illyrians that humans were more than the monsters they feared, that they could be allies, even friends. No matter how long it took, no matter what obstacles he faced, he would not rest until he had forged a path to peace between their species. The fate of two worlds hung in the balance, and he would not let them down. Mark stared at Orion, his mind reeling from the revelation. The images of humans locked in brutal combat, honed by millennia of survival against all odds, flashed through his thoughts. He opened his mouth to argue, to insist that humans were more than just their violent past. We're not all savages, Mark said, his voice strained. Our history of conflict is a product of our circumstances, not some innate bloodlust. But even as the words left his lips, a flicker of doubt gnawed at him. The Illyrians' fear, their revulsion at his very existence, was it really so unfounded? Had he been naive to think that centuries of ingrained prejudice could be overcome so easily? Before he could dwell on it further, a piercing alarm shattered the tense silence. Orion's head snapped up, his eyes widening with unmistakable dread. Without a word, he grabbed Mark's arm and hauled him out of the room, plunging them into a dizzying maze of corridors. Mark's heart pounded in his ears as they ran, the blaring klaxon nearly drowned out by the thunder of pursuing footsteps. Shouts echoed off the walls, the guttural bark of the Illyrian language twisted with fear and rage. They careened around a corner, and Mark's stomach dropped. A phalanx of Illyrian soldiers blocked their path, plasma rifles leveled at Mark's chest with quivering aim. Mark skidded to a halt, his hands instinctively raising in surrender. But Orion stepped forward, his posture straight and commanding despite the weapons trained on them. He raised a small metallic device, his voice ringing with authority. Stand down, he ordered, his tone brooking no argument. By order of the High Council, this human is under my protection. The soldiers wavered, their eyes flicking from Orion to Mark and back again. The tension stretched, seconds feeling like hours, until finally, reluctantly, they lowered their rifles and parted to let them pass. Mark let out a breath he hadn't realized he'd been holding, but there was no time for relief. Orion was already moving again, his grip on Mark's arm unrelenting as he pulled him onward. Questions buzzed in Mark's mind as they navigated the twisting halls. Under Orion's protection, what did that mean? And what could possibly have the Illyrians so terrified that they were willing to defy their own chain of command? He got his answer as they burst through a final set of doors, emerging into a cavernous chamber that pulsed with strange eldritch light. Towering machines hummed and thrummed, their purpose as alien to Mark as the world he now found himself in. But it was the figure at the center of it all that drew his gaze and froze the blood in his veins. A behemoth of rippling muscle and glistening chitin, its body a nightmare fusion of humanoid and cephalopod. Tentacles writhed and coiled around a barrel chest, each one tipped with a wickedly barbed talon. Mark had seen illustrations of the Illyrian warrior cast in the archives, but no static image could capture the sheer menace that radiated from the creature before him. This was a being bred for one purpose alone, to destroy any threat to the Illyrian way of life without hesitation or mercy. And as its cold, dead eyes locked onto Mark, he knew with sinking certainty that he was now the sole focus of that lethal intent. The Illyrian warrior lunged at Mark, its tentacles lashing out like living whips. Mark dodged left, right, left again, his heart pounding as he tried to stay one step ahead. But the creature was relentless, its attacks coming faster and faster. Mark's muscles burned with exertion, his breath coming in ragged gasps. He couldn't keep this up forever. Sooner or later the warrior would catch him, and then... Suddenly a shimmering force field sprang up around Mark, just as the warrior's tentacles slammed into it. With a sizzling crackle of energy, the creature recoiled, mandibles clicking in frustration as it searched for a way through. Mark risked a glance over his shoulder. Orion stood at a nearby control panel, fingers flying over the glowing keys. But even as Mark watched, the force field flickered and dimmed. The strain of holding back the warrior's onslaught was taking its toll on the Illyrian technology. 
Mark braced himself, muscles tensing as he prepared to fight for his life. He knew he couldn't rely on the force field to protect him forever. It was only a matter of time before. The force field collapsed with a crackle of dissipating energy. The warrior lunged forward, tentacles outstretched. But just as the creature was about to reach him, a blinding flash of light filled the chamber. Mark instinctively shielded his eyes, his senses overwhelmed by the sudden burst of energy. When his vision cleared, he saw the warrior lying motionless on the ground, its body smoking and twitching. And standing over it, a small handheld device trembling in his hand, was Zephyr, the Illyrian scientist who had questioned Mark about Earth's deadly predators. Guys, I couldn't let them kill you, Zephyr stammered, his voice shaking with a mixture of fear and determination, not without giving you a chance to prove that humans are more than just mindless beasts. He took a deep breath, his gaze locking with Mark's. But you must understand the gravity of your situation. The High Council has decreed that you are to be executed, your body dissected and studied, so that we may learn the secrets of your species' terrifying power. They believe it is the only way to ensure the safety of the Illyrian people. Mark's blood ran cold at Zephyr's words, the full weight of his predicament crashing down on him like a tidal wave. Execution. Dissection. The Illyrian High Council saw him as nothing more than a dangerous animal to be put down and studied. Zephyr's hand shook as he lowered the device. We don't have much time, he said urgently. The guards will be here any minute. We have to get you out of here, somewhere safe where we can... Zephyr clutched at Mark's arm, his fingers trembling. There's an emergency exit, he whispered urgently. Down that hallway to the left, it leads to a hangar bay. But there was no time for explanations or reassurances. The sound of footsteps was growing louder, echoing off the walls like a drumbeat of impending doom. They had to move, and fast. Lead the way, Mark said, his voice rough with exhaustion and adrenaline. Zephyr took off down the corridor, his lab coat flapping behind him like a white flag of surrender. Mark and Orion followed close on his heels, their hearts pounding in their chests as they ran. And then, just as they were beginning to lose hope, they saw it. A heavy metal door, its surface scarred and pitted with age. Zephyr skidded to a halt in front of it, his hands shaking as he fumbled with the controls. Behind them, the sound of footsteps grew louder, closer. Mark could hear the crackle of energy weapons powering up, could feel the heat of their searing beams on the back of his neck. He turned to face their pursuers, his hand tightening around the weapon at his side. He knew he couldn't hold them off for long, knew that every second he bought them was precious. But before he could even raise his weapon, the door behind him hissed open with a pneumatic whir. Zephyr let out a cry of relief, grabbing Mark by the arm and yanking him through the opening. They stumbled into a vast cavernous space, their footsteps echoing off the high vaulted ceilings. The hangar bay was a hive of activity, with sleek silver spacecraft lined up in neat rows along the walls. But even as they took in the sight, they heard the sound of shouting behind them. The Illyrian soldiers had caught up to them, their weapons raised and ready to fire. Run! Mark yelled, pushing Orion and Zephyr ahead of him as he turned to face their pursuers. He could see the fear in their eyes, could see the hesitation in their movements. They didn't want to kill him, he realized with a start. They were just following orders, doing what they had been trained to do. But he couldn't afford to hesitate, couldn't afford to show mercy, not when the lives of his friends were at stake. He raised his weapon and fired, the bolts of energy slamming into the soldiers with devastating force. They crumpled to the ground like puppets with their strings cut, their weapons clattering to the floor beside them. Mark turned and ran, his heart pounding in his ears as he raced towards the nearest spacecraft. He could hear Orion and Zephyr's footsteps behind him, could hear their ragged breathing and the pounding of their hearts. They were almost there, almost to safety. Just a few more steps and they would be... A searing pain exploded in Mark's shoulder, sending him stumbling forward with a cry of agony. He looked down to see a smoking hole in his flesh, the edges of the wound charred and blackened. Behind him, he heard Orion shout his name, heard the fear and desperation in his voice. 
but he couldn't stop, couldn't falter. Not now, not when they were so close. With a grunt of effort, he hauled himself to his feet and staggered towards the spacecraft, his vision blurring with pain and exhaustion. He could hear the sound of energy bolts sizzling past him, could feel the heat of their passage on his skin. But he didn't look back, didn't dare to take his eyes off the ship that was their only hope of escape. He stumbled up the ramp, his feet slipping on the blood-slicked metal. And then he was inside, collapsing onto the floor of the craft with a gasp of relief. Orion and Zephyr were there beside him, their faces pale and drawn with fear. Orion nodded, his hands flying over the controls with a speed and skill that belied his terror. The ship shuddered beneath them, the engines roaring to life with a deafening whine. And then they were lifting off, the hangar bay falling away beneath them as they rose into the sky. Mark could see the Illyrian soldiers below, their weapons raised in futile defiance as they watched their quarry escape. But even as relief washed over him, Mark knew that their troubles were far from over. They had escaped the facility, but they were still trapped on an alien world, with no way of knowing what dangers lay ahead. And with the full might of the Illyrian military hunting them, they would have to be more careful than ever before. One wrong move, one moment of carelessness, and they would be right back where they started. Mark let his head fall back against the wall of the ship, his eyes drifting closed as exhaustion and pain overtook him. He could feel the warmth of his own blood seeping through his fingers, could feel the cold metal of the floor beneath him. But even as he slipped into unconsciousness, he knew that he couldn't give up. He had to keep fighting, had to find a way to prove to the Illyrians that humans were more than just mindless beasts. Because if he failed, if he let the fear and prejudice of this alien world consume him, then everything he had fought for, everything he had sacrificed, would be for nothing. And that was a fate worse than death itself. Mark Orion and Zephyr raced through the twisting corridors, their footsteps echoing off the cold metal walls. The facility seemed to stretch on forever, a labyrinth of sterile hallways and locked doors, but they couldn't stop, couldn't afford to rest, not with the full might of the Illyrian military hunting them down. As they rounded a corner, Orion skidded to a halt, his eyes widening in shock. In here, he whispered, gesturing to a large, dimly lit chamber. They slipped inside, the door hissing shut behind them. But as Mark's eyes adjusted to the gloom, he felt his stomach lurch with horror. The chamber was filled with rows upon rows of towering, cylindrical tanks, each one containing a floating, lifeless body. Illyrian warriors, their features twisted and distorted by the bubbling, viscous fluid that surrounded them. Zephyr let out a choked gasp, his hand flying to his mouth. By the stars, he whispered, his voice trembling with revulsion. What have they done? Torotian stepped closer to the tanks, his face grim as he studied the grotesque specimens. Genetic experimentation, he said, his tone heavy with disgust. The High Council has been secretly developing a new breed of warrior, one specifically designed to combat the perceived threat of humanity. Mark felt a chill run down his spine as he took in the scale of the operation, the sheer number of tanks stretching out before him like a nightmarish forest of glass and steel. The Illyrian's fear of humans ran far deeper than he ever could have imagined. Suddenly a flicker of movement caught Mark's eye. He whirled around to see a figure emerge from the shadows at the far end of the chamber, the head counsellor, her face a mask of cold determination as she strode towards them, flanked by a phalanx of heavily armed soldiers. You have seen too much, human she said, her voice echoing in the cavernous space. You and your kind are a cancer upon the galaxy, a plague that must be eradicated before it spreads beyond control. She raised her hand, and the soldiers leveled their weapons at Mark and his companions, fingers tightening on the triggers. Mark braced himself for the end, his mind racing with thoughts of all the things he'd never get to do, all the people he'd never see again. But just as the soldiers were about to fire, a deafening explosion rocked the chamber, sending everyone stumbling and reeling. Through the smoke and debris, Mark saw a familiar figure emerge, Captain Jenna Novak, 
the commander of the human diplomatic mission, her face streaked with grime and blood as she led a heavily armed strike team into the fray. Stand down, she barked, her voice ringing out like a thunderclap. By order of the United Earth Government, this facility is now under human control. The Illyrian soldiers hesitated, glancing uncertainly at the head counsellor. She stood firm, her eyes blazing with fury. You have no authority here, human, she spat. This is a sovereign Illyrian facility. Your intrusion is an act of war. The only act of war here is yours, Captain Novak retorted, her rifle never wavering from the counsellor's chest. Kidnapping and experimenting on sentient beings, developing biological weapons, these are crimes against galactic law. She glanced at Mark, her expression softening for a moment. Are you all right, Mr. Allen? Mark nodded, relief washing over him in a dizzying wave. I am now, Captain. Captain Novak turned back to the head counsellor, her jaw set with grim determination. You have two options. Surrender peacefully and submit to the authority of the United Earth Government or face the consequences of your actions. For a long tense moment no one moved. The only sound was the low hum of the tanks, the gentle bubbling of the fluid within. Then, slowly, the head counsellor raised her hands in surrender, her face twisted with impotent rage. This isn't over, she hissed as the human soldiers moved in to secure the chamber. You have no idea what you've unleashed. As explosions rocked the facility, Mark, Orion and Zephyr seized their chance, slipping away in the chaos of Captain Novak's assault. Smoke filled the air as they sprinted through twisting corridors, the thunder of combat fading behind them. Mark's heart pounded as they burst into the hangar bay, the human ship waiting like a silver beacon of salvation. Plasma bolts sizzled past as they raced up the boarding ramp. Suddenly, a searing pain exploded in Mark's side, and he stumbled, looking down to see a growing red stain spreading across his shirt. Gritting his teeth against the agony, Mark staggered up the ramp and into the ship, collapsing against the bulkhead. Orion and Zephyr sealed the airlock, the hiss of pressurizing air drowning out the sounds of battle outside. On the bridge, Captain Novak snapped orders to her crew, her face grim and focused. The viewscreen showed the Illyrian fleet massing in formation, their ships bristling with weaponry as they moved to block the human vessel's escape. Get us out of here, Novak barked as the ship lifted off, the hangar bay falling away below them. The Illyrian ships opened fire, lances of deadly energy flashing past the cockpit windows. The human ship jinked and wove, its shields flaring under the onslaught. Mark dragged himself to the co-pilot's seat, his breathing ragged. He watched the Illyrian ships grow larger on the screen, their weapons hammering at the human ship's defences. It was only a matter of time before the shields failed. With a deep shudder, the ship leapt forward, the stars blurring into streaks of light as they rocketed towards the edge of the blockade. The Illyrian ships redeployed, moving to cut off their escape. Energy beams crisscrossed space, the void lighting up like a deadly web. Warnings blared on the control panels as the ship shook under the withering fire. The shields were on the verge of collapse, the hull integrity failing. But with a final desperate push of the engines, the ship tore free of the Illyrian trap and sliced into hyperspace. Mark slumped back in his seat, his vision greying at the edges. They had escaped, but a cold sense of dread gripped his heart. He knew this was only the beginning. The Illyrians would not rest until they had crushed humanity utterly. Their fear and hatred ran too deep. As Mark's life spilled out onto the deck, he looked up at Orion and Zephyr, his voice a weak rasp. You have to warn them, he forced out, his breath rattling in his lungs. You have to tell Earth what's coming. With a final shuddering breath, Mark let his eyes slip closed, a faint smile on his bloodied lips. He had played his part. Earth would not be caught unaware. Humanity would fight as it always had, with the ferocity of a wounded predator. The Illyrians had gravely underestimated the human will to survive. They would soon learn the terrible price of their mistake. For when the galaxy's apex hunters were pushed to the brink of annihilation, when their backs were against the wall, and all hope seemed lost, 
that was when they were at their most dangerous. That was when they would bare their teeth and strike, without mercy or hesitation. When staring into the abyss of extinction, humankind would rise up and drag their foes down into the darkness with them. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.